It was always a special moment when he used that phrase, how sweet it is. It was so joyful at times to hear him say that because it came from the heart. It was like a celebratory mantra, if you will. The Milton E. Proby Room inductees epitomize exactly what Ray did in his community. He gave back in so many great ways, and there's so many great stories out there about his giving back. There are so many people out there that were touched by Ray that we'll never even have a grasp. He was bold. He was courageous. Um, he was not always the most polished person, but he was the most sincere person. And that passion that he had for kids and disadvantaged people, it always came out. He spent the first seven years of his life on Bessemer. He lived on, he had a Northern address. So he's legitimately from Bessemer, basically a block away from the Bessemer, AKA the Ray Aguilera Park. That's where he grew up. That's where his family had a pharmacy. And he really learned that spirit of generosity from his mom and dad. He had some hard times. He knew what it was like to, to want to buy your kid something for their birthday or for Christmas. It really created a difference in him. Ray was known as the mayor of Bessemer, uh, the unofficial mayor of Bessemer. So Ray did tours as a city council person. He also worked at Pueblo Community College, helping kids further their education there. As he established not one, but two private foundations, the Pueblo Hispanic Education Foundation to provide a need for more Latinos from the community to access higher education goals and to be able to attend the university and college there. The other foundation that he started was called the Pueblo Poverty Foundation. And that foundation too had as its goal, education. And his favorite project was the Christmas extravaganza. I don't know that there's any inch of Pueblo that he didn't have an impact on, no matter what community it is, no matter what demographic. He was someone that you knew you could call up and you could get something done by just calling him. And you know, Ray would take calls from anybody for whatever reason. People knew that if they called Ray, he was going to do something about it. And so I would watch him over the years and I, I was like, why is he so successful? It's because he was never afraid to ask. And I don't care who it was, you know, from the governor, uh, down to somebody working in a restaurant. He wanted to make sure that our community was lifted and he knew that if he could help lift others, our community would be lifted up together. There was a, I think she was a, a widow. Uh, the water got into her basement and she called Ray. Uh, this lady said, uh, you know, my, I don't have a furnace now. It's been inundated with water. He made about four phone calls and got the money, got the guy to install the furnace. And, and got everything back, cleaned the house. And, you know, it's not like he was doing this as part of the city. He was doing that personally. I saw what a true person, not just saying things, but doing. He mentored people like Leroy Garcia, who now, you know, is working for uh, the Biden administration um, because he cared about young professionals kind of taking taking the lead, and he was really big about leadership and standing up for the community, no matter what that meant. You know, and it's hard to, to also not talk about Ray without talking about Christmas. He loved the Christmas holiday, and his favorite thing to do was to host the Bessemer's Christmas extravaganza, and the most fun part for him was playing Santa Claus. He would go to everybody's house, um, and whether it was a poinsettia plant, and I know that one year, I think he had someone build birdhouses for all of us. I could see the passion and the love that he had for kids, and he was willing not to just say, hey, I love kids and I think they're great. He was saying, what can we do to help kids? And I love those kind of people. So uh, our community, the, the Hispanic portion of our community, for years has struggled with underachievement K through 12. And if you're underachieving K through 12, that means you're not doing well in higher education. So the idea was, let's uh, figure out how we can lobby with the districts, the school districts, so they can improve the quality of education for our students. And then the students that have the capacity and the good grades, let's figure out how we can make it easier for them to get into higher education and succeed. How are we gonna deal with this issue? 
Pueblo Hispanic Education Foundation. He did the leadership on it, but the rest of us helped him. What I remember the most is we were in his house. He was already getting sick, and it was going to be time for the big golden ticket. He said, you know, Abby, he said, but you know, we're going to do it. We're going to give him a free pass to swimming. For some reason, he wanted them to have a noodle. He said, figure out how to put that noodle in. He said, and I want a plastic see-through bag. And I said, OK, you know. And I remember rushing and, you know, just buying one noodle and getting a plastic bag, and, you know, and rushing back before Andrea took him to Denver, you know. And, and he, they were in the car, and they were getting ready to leave and I ran over and I said, Ray, here's what the bag's gonna look like. And he goes, where are you gonna put that golden ticket? And I said, right on the edge. And that was still his last thought. It wasn't about his, his, his body failing. It wasn't about him not feeling well. It was about, I want those kids to make sure and get that, Abby. And that's always been Ray. And that's a thought that has meant the world to me. That's Ray right there, if anybody hasn't pointed that out. But this is our wall. Of, of prominent Hispanics in our community that have really made a difference. You know, one, one of the things I'm proud of is that my wife and I nominated him for the uh, Lifetime Achievement Award with the Latino Chamber here in Pueblo. He received the United States Hispanic Chamber Government Advocate of the Year, and that was a national um, award. And I got to share that experience with him in Puerto Rico. That very park that he did so much at um, is named after him. And I told him, Ray, this park is someday gonna be named after you. And he said, oh no, no it's not, Andrea. I said, oh, it will. He challenged me. And he, he made me challenge myself to grow and to really um, learn, to research, to have a voice, to stand up for myself. He did that for a lot of people. He took them along, he mentored them. He told them, yes, do this, no, don't do that, or this is the kind of person that you need to surround yourself with. He always had great insight. He always had wise advice. You know, I would like to thank his family, uh, his daughter Andrea and his family for sharing him with Pueblo and allowing us to be such a big part of his life. So it made a big change in the number of role models in our communities as bankers, as lawyers, as doctors, and that is what epitomizes Ray and his induction today. I would definitely challenge people to look within their heart and see how they could be like Ray Aguilera and give of themselves and think beyond themselves because Ray was really a master at that. Let's continue. Let's not let Ray's legacy die. And I know so many people loved him. It's not gonna happen. We're gonna continue forward in his name and in his memory for as long as we can. It honors my brother and he truly deserves it. How sweet it is 